We know, Lord God in heaven, we need to uh, love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Bless us, God, that we don't speak this, Father, but that we practice this. Let us have the love we need, Father. We know obeying you, we can start loving one another and encouraging one another to be faithful to you as we be faithful ourselves. Lord God in heaven, bless us that we be strong, Father, as we go through this difficult times that's going on in the world today, that we rely on you for all things. We pray, God, for those who are suffering at this time, the hurricanes, uh, they suffering a one manner or another. Satan is busy, Father. We ask, God, that you bless us. We put our trust in you. Lord God in heaven, we pray as we continue this worship service, Father, bless each and every one of us that we bring our mind, body, and soul into this worship service. When we sing praises, let us all sing praises to you. Lord God, as we continue with the worship service, we ask God that you continually guide us. Be with Brother Hawkins. As he brings the message, be with our hearts as it's open to receive it. And bless us, God, as we receive it and obey, we teach others. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to this hymn number 13, Shelter in a Time of Storm. We'll sing the first, second, and last stanza. Have a little sing. The Lord's our rock, in a him we hide. He's my shelter in the time of a storm. Well, secure whatever you'll be tied. He's my shelter in the time. Oh, I got a savior in my Jesus. He's a rock in a land. He's in a land. He's in a weary land. Well, Jesus is a rock in a shelter in the time of the storm. Well, the shade by day, defense by night, he's my shelter in the time of the storm. Well, no fears alarm, no foes, no roll, he's my shelter in the time of the storm. Oh, I got a saber in my Jesus, he's a rock in a land, he's in a land, we're in a weary In our oh, shelter in the time of the storm, well, oh, rock be mine, oh, refuge dear, he's my shelter in the time of the storm, well, be thou our helper ever near, he's my shelter in the time of the storm, oh, I got a saver in my Jesus, he's a rock in our land, he's in our now we're in a weary land. Well, Jesus is a rock in our Oh, he's my shelter in the time. Oh, I got a savior in my Jesus. He's a rock in our Well, it's in our Down, 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 down. Well, Jesus is a rock in our Oh, Lord, a shelter in the time. Oh, I got a savior in my Jesus. He's a rock in a land. He's in a land. Now when you're in a weary land, well, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Oh, Lord, I shelter in the time of storm. Yeah, that was getting good to me, church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. I need to wing, to wing, to veil my face. I need to wing, to wing, to veil my feet. I need to wing, to wing, to fly away. I have the world can't do me wrong. Just raise again. To wing, to wing, to veil my face. I need to wing, to wing, to veil my feet. I need to wing, to wing. To veil my face, I'll give me two wings, two wings to fly away, and the world can't do me no more. Two wings, two wings, two wings to veil my face, I need two wings, two wings to veil my father, two wings, two wings. 
to fly away and the world can do me no more. Well, one of these old mornings, yeah, and it might not be long, long. you're going to come around looking for me, but I'll be long gone home. fail on me. Yeah. I want you to meet me with another pair. Two wings, two wings, two wings. Oh, to my face. Two, two, two wings, two wings, two wings. Uh -huh. to my face. Two wings. I'm going to fly away to where the world can do me no harm. Uh -huh. well, up in glory, I got a new old white robe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Up in glory, I got a new pair of shoes. But most of all, I've got these old wings. For where I can go and share the good news. Yeah. I need two oh, wings. Two wings. Two wings. Hey, to bear my face. Give them to me, Father. Two wings. Oh, to, to bear my face. Two wings. Get two wings. I'm gonna fly away when the world can't do me no harm. Give me two wings, two wings, two wings. Two wings, two wings. Oh, I'm gonna fly away. Two wings, two wings. We're gonna fly away when the world can't do me no harm. Hmm? I can't have my other little song I like it. You don't know what my song is. Al, if you don't know, Joe, will you sing my song for me? God is a good God and that will never change. good God? Amen. And that's not going to change, church. If God is good, then we ought to be good. 
question is, I know God is good, but have you been good? <laughs> Y'all been good this week? Don't, don't hide from it now. If you've been good, just say, yeah, I've been good. I was good. I'm good right now. Amen. Sometimes you got to take what you can get. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen? It's always good to have the opportunity to get together with believers on the first day of the week to worship the great God of heaven. Maybe you're not a member of the body of Christ. We want you to know that you are indeed our special guest today. Every guest is an honored guest. You are a VIP if you're visiting with us. Amen? amen. And if you have... Uh, uh, been visiting for some time, then you are a uh, special VIP. And then if you are a regular attender, then you are an aura VIP. Somebody, what's that? I said a regular, very important person. But we're happy that you're here with us, and we pray that we have something to say. I want to thank you for your prayers. I just got back from Oklahoma City and Dallas, and what an amazing homegoing service we had for Brother Aeneas Crenshaw. Uh, for those of you who were familiar with him, you know how valuable he was to all of us, especially ministers and the body of Christ at large. He touched so many lives. There were two services. There was a wake on uh, Tuesday at the church, and then the services were on Wednesday. And it was a wonderful celebration. While sad and painful, we lost a great soldier for Christ, who meant so much to all of us. To me personally, he was a spiritual mentor. He always poured his heart out uh, into the lives of others, and I've thought about characteristics that I'd like to learn from him as a, as a minister, and that is to pour your heart out. Arneas was passionate about preaching, and he was passionate about ministry, uh, and he literally pulled on the heartstrings of other preachers and I appreciate that so much. He will be sorely missed, but I'm praying enough of us will not only imbibe his heart and his spirit for ministry, but he'll live on uh, in our memories as well as our ministry. So thank you for your prayers. Continue to pray for him and his family, uh, for Sister Dolly and for the kids and for his son and for the extended family. Pray for the Northeast Church of Christ. We presented uh, a uh, resolution uh, that was put together by our own sister, Vernell Robinson. Really appreciate her heart in doing that. It was representative of all of the Churches of Christ here in Los Angeles. It was gladly received and made mention of. There were so many resolutions that were provided, there was no way they can even begin to read one of them. But they did acknowledge the Figueroa Church of Christ and the Churches of Christ at large uh, here in the city of Los Angeles. Other ministers were there as well for my area, and I just want to thank God for the Figueroa family in sending me to be a part of those services. Amen? Now, let's get to the business at hand. If you have your Bibles, let me see the Word of God. I couldn't wait, and I can't wait to preach this morning. Amen. Amen. Hold it up high. Have you ever felt like that about anything? Yeah. Yeah. You ever felt anxious about doing anything? Yeah. Most of you get anxious when it's time to go to vacation. You, you know about that, right? You start thinking about it. You, haven't, you may put them down. Bless your heart. You haven't, uh, you haven't even left yet, but you can't sleep. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Oh, that ain't, that ain't working. You ever been in love? Yeah. You ever thought about falling in love? Can you go back that far? You remember how you couldn't get him or her off your mind? Yeah. There ain't nothing working this morning. <laughs> man. I ain't got no jokes. I'm not, I don't know how to tell jokes. I'm trying to connect. I thought maybe... If the vacation thing didn't work, maybe the, the love thing would work. That ain't working. You got a favorite cat, a dog? Amen. I, I do so much traveling now. People are bringing their dogs with them. And everybody's getting those little, you know, server jackets. It was two sisters on a plane. They had two twin Yorkies. And they were called, uh, what they call them dogs? Service dogs. So the therapist that I am, I'm trying to sit there and find out that what's wrong with you. You look okay physically, 
You don't appear to have any physical, noticeable physical abnormalities. Maybe there's some psych stuff going on. So I started to wonder, should I ask for another seat in case there was an episode? People are passionate about a lot of things. People get up. I get up for ministry. I get up for preaching. I get up for God. Amen. Am I by myself? Am I crazy? Yeah. Is it all right to get up for God? Is it all right to be passionate? Hey Amen. I'm, I, feel, I feel the same way Cat felt about me when she saw me. Yeah, it was 35 years ago, right here in this church. She was up here just doing her thing and singing, and I was back there trying to figure out where am I, who am I, and how did I get here? And Sister Hawkins had done a little singing thing and had some little play. You guys was doing something here, and David and Kevin had pulled me in. I don't know why they pulled me in. I was not trying to be pulled in. And, and then at the end, Sister Hawkins came by the door. And... Uh, you know, we were asked to go back there and shake the members' hands. And while coming, she saw me. <laughs> I'm starting to make some progress with this group this morning. And, and she came and she stuck her hand out. And there are always several sides to this story. And then there's the truth. And I am telling the truth. She grabbed my hand and I said in my, you know, Luther Vandross voice, I said to her, if I had a voice like yours, I'd trade mine in. And she wouldn't let go of my hand. And I'm trying to pull away. <laughs> Passion! I'll make you do some things. Say amen. Let's go to Matthew. You, I know y'all waiting on the rest of the story. I'm not. No. No. You're trying to get me away from my sermon. That ain't happening. Matthew chapter 8, 23 through 27. I want to read that. I want to thank Brother Omar who read that so excellently from the New King James. But listen to what the NIV says. Psalms, I mean Matthew 8, 23, NIV. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us. We are going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. What kind of man is this? You ever asked that question? You ever thought about Jesus? What kind of man is this that possesses sovereign power over the elements? You know, the month of August, as I said last time we were here, has been a challenge in terms of the things that were going on politically, socially, and even with Hurricane Harvey in Houston. And now we're in September. This is my month. Amen. Any sep where the September people at? Where y'all at? Man. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Two of us get it. If you're in the month of September, raise your hand and just shake him like you just don't. Yeah, September. September is the month of all months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it appears, unfortunately, that September may very well be remembered as stormy September. Not quite what I had in mind. I thought September would be easy like Sunday morning. Ah that we would just slide on into September and the waters would be calm and things would go well because it's that kind of a month. Especially as it relates to our messages, stormy September may very well be a reality for us 
and it has much to do with about some things the Lord has placed on my heart. And it really started out of last week's sermon entitled Facing the Life's, Facing Life Storms. Y'all remember that? I have prayed and prepared a series of sermons from that initial topic. And our topic this morning finds its meaning in the context of facing life storms. So if you're listening, the topic this morning is calming the storm within. And then if you come back tonight, we'll talk about a storm within a storm. And then next Lord's Day, we're going to deal with another aspect of stormy weather. And while I'm there, another storm, even as we are speaking, uh, is uh, raging its fury uh, on Florida. So pray, pray uh, for those, those people, our brothers and sisters. Pray for communities. Pray for the people there. And then behind uh, Irma is, I think, Hurricane Jose. Uh, and, and, and then on to the east, to the west of that, uh, in what's called the Gulf of Mexico, uh, near Cancun, uh, is another hurricane. Her, her name is Katie, I believe. Uh, Katia? Uh, yeah. It's a hurricane. <laughs> and then to the south, they've had a serious earthquake, uh, 8.1 in, in Mexico. And I don't know what you do with catastrophic phenomenon, as some would call it, on natural disasters, but I think there is something to be said, and maybe because it's stormy September, we've got to address those things. It's apparent, though, that storms are reality, amen? And they present themselves in many forms. The word storm in our text, and I shared some of this with you on last week, so be patient with me if I'm redundant. I am redundant on purpose because I want to drive home the point. The word storm in our text derives its meaning from the Greek word seismos. We get our English word seismic seismograph and seismology and it's connected to earthquakes but the Greek meaning of this word literally means to have a commotion or if you will a shaking and it literally has reference to earthquake this word appears 14 times in the New Testament and out of the 14 times 11 of those times the appearances refer to earthquakes and the remaining one to a storm. It is used in a literal sense to speak of a natural storm, but it is also used figuratively to refer to life's difficulties. Y'all on the line with me? Such storms manifest uh, themselves in various ways. I've identified three char characters or or should I say three areas for which storms manifest themselves. One is called natural storms, or if you will, storms of nature. I'm talking about earth, wind, and fire, and I don't mean the singing group. Amen. Somebody says, oh, we finna have a good sermon. He's just talking earth, wind, and fire. No, I'm talking about the natural storms, although they did write September. I'm just saying, no coincidence. No exegetical or hermeneutical coincidence. Stuff just happens sometimes to lucky September people. And then there's something we call physical storms. Storms that affect the mind, the body, and the spirit. They may manifest themselves in physical ways through personal pain. Y'all on the line? They come under the titles of psychological storms, anatomical storms, and emotional storms. And then thirdly, there is this thing I've identified as spiritual storms that are waged on the soul. They are, in most cases, external. And they are the result of the forces of evil against the forces of good. 
sometimes they're internal, where the spirit, the inner man is fighting against the flesh. Anybody know anything about that? So much so that good I know I should do, I don't do. And the very thing I ought not do, I find myself doing. Anybody know anything about that storm? That's a raging storm that plagues us every day. And so these storms are reality. I have, through my studies, identified three major biblical storms, and I shared this with you last week for the purposes of, again, being redundant and repetitive. The first are what we call divine storms of discipline. We reference Jonah in relationship to that storm. And while I'm there, what I'm going to do to make the lessons more practical, whatever points I make, we're going to go get a person. Because I think the messages that I've prepared are best understood in the context of people who are in those storms. Amen. You can't tell me about a thunderstorm if you've never been in one. I've been in, not, I've been in a Texas thunderstorm. Not a California cool thunderstorm where you get a little rumble, where you hear the rumble of the, th the thunder over there. Now, I I've been in a Texas th uh, storm where the thunder knock on your door. And it's scared. You ever been scared? I've been scared. I've been scared out of the bejeebers because of thunder. Crackling thunder. Old folks back home would say, open the front door and the back door. Could never understand it, never wanted to do it. I'm trying to close the door. There was this myth that the, if you, once, the, once you hear the thunder, beware the lightning because it'll come through the front and go out the back. <laughs> Just better, better pay grandpa ain't sitting in the middle of it in his chair. <laughs> He'll get hit by lightning. I'm being facetious, but my point is, there are divine storms of discipline. Number two, who knows? Y'all remember? Demonic storms of, come on, church, of destruction. We use Job for that. And thirdly, daily storms of development. And today we're going to talk about one of those storms which I have labeled a daily storms, but a divine storm of discipline. And we're going to reference Paul in just a moment in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. All three of these storms will be experienced by humanity at some point in time. Not if, but when. Amen. I said not if, but when. As we revisit our text here for the second time, we were made aware last Sunday of the obvious existence of storms. A storm in this text where the waves were overwhelming. You know, one thing I love about the biblical text is that the authors who are telling these stories are not leaving out some vital points. Sometimes we want to get to the point and we miss the stuff in between. This was no small storm. These guys were fishermen. They knew about the water. They owned boats. They knew about gale winds and a nice gentle breeze. And they also knew when they were in trouble. This storm manifested itself in such a way as the waves were covering over the boat and coming into the boat. This storm, whose waves were overwhelming and whose winds caused such fear that the disciples feared for their very lives. Now, that's a storm. When a sailor tells you, we're getting ready to die, trust me, there's trouble. And this interesting point is significant because sometimes life's challenges are what? Overwhelming. And they'll cause you to become crippled to the point of self-destruction because you are so afraid. Have you ever been afraid? Well, y'all just real quiet. Y'all all right? Somebody said, we're already in the storm. I'll be down there in just a moment. I know a storm chaser. If you got a storm, if you got a storm, I, I, I know a storm chaser. Say, say amen. A storm can cause you to buckle under. Some storms can cause you to literally ball up into a fetal position, close the windows and cut the lights out and pray that the sun doesn't come up because you want out. But I dropped by to tell you in this storm, while there was 12 disciples, we believe, on the boat, there was somebody else on there. In the stern of this boat lay one, 
who was not affected by the storm, but affected it. What do you mean by affect? He was not bothered by what was happening outside of the boat. What really bothered him was what was going on on the inside of it. Y'all with me? Stay with me. Further observation of this text revealed to me that there are two storms at work here. Y'all see it? One external and the other internal. Are y'all with me? One outside the boat, the other on the inside of the boat. And as I observe these two storms, I notice that the one affected the other, causing a storm in a storm. And matter of fact, that's tonight's sermon. And you need to come back for that one. Because I'm convinced storms will always be out there. But they were never designed to affect us in here. And until we calm the storm within here, we won't know how to deal with the storm out there. Say amen, somebody. It dawned on me. We've been called as a dynamic church in the midst of stormy weather. But if the church is always in a storm, if you're always sick and down and depressed and no energy, we can't help folk who are really in the storm until we deal with our own storm. Is that all right? So this morning, I want to give you an antidote to start dealing with the storm on the inside. How do I calm the storm on the inside? Sometimes we focus too much on the external storm and we miss the storm on the inside. But I'm so glad that we got somebody aboard boat. Say amen, somebody. That's not bothered by the external storms nor the internal. How do you know he was asleep? And the book says, it's interesting because this little story opens up with the disciples followed him. Y'all see that? The Bible says, and they followed him. Well, I thought about that. The fact that you're following him doesn't mean that you know him. The fact that you're in the facility doesn't really prove much of anything. A lot of folk are inside of religious facilities this morning. But the question is, do you know why you have arrived at the facility? And are you connected to him who's responsible for those who are in the pews that are sitting inside of the facility? The disciples were following Jesus. If they had followed Jesus, they'd have laid down right beside him and went to sleep. Don't miss that. They followed him, and he went in there and went to sleep. They stayed awake. Sound like some of us. Storm is raging, and you've been up all night trying to figure out how we going to pay these four bills with $20. I don't know. And you're just sitting there, and you're ringing. It's ringing your hand, and, and the Lord is asleep. Help me, somebody. If you follow Jesus... You don't focus on the storm. You lay down at nighttime and you go to sleep. Why? Because you're following somebody that can speak to that storm. See the problem? Sometimes we hang around Jesus, but we never get to know him. We never develop an intimate relationship. We never understand the power that he possesses. And so we keep rowing against the tide. Failing to understand that we got a, a superior naval officer on board ship. Not only can direct a boat, but can tell the water to chill out. I'm learning now. Men going to go to sleep. Say amen. That you can't control the Wu-Tang. You can't control the elements. Matter of fact, this and you have no power. Conclusion, go to sleep. Look at your neighbor and say, man, you need to go to sleep. Amen. And I don't mean taking no drugs to go to sleep. I'm not talking about induced sleep. Amen. Through NyQuil and Sleepies. And for some of y'all, a little Jack Daniel, Jim Bean, and Johnny Walker. I'm not talking about induced sleep. I'm talking about divine Holy Ghost sleep. When you lay down and you can rest easy because Jesus is the captain of your ship. Can I get a witness? Anybody know anything about that? I'm tired of tossing and turning at night. Tired of fighting demons at nighttime. I know I'm the only one. Sister Hawkins is laying over there. She, she smiles in her sleep. 
smile, and every now and then I hear a little giggle. I'm not going to say nothing about the snoring part, but I hear a little giggle, <laughs> smiling. She over there playing with the grandbabies and feeding the little lambs. Somebody said, what are you doing? You don't want to know. I've got a sheet wrapped around my neck. I don't know how it got there. <laughs> Sweat everywhere. Wake up hair everywhere. Can't find my teeth. <laughs> Cane my leg. Fight with demons at night. I'm tired of that. I want to sleep. Jesus can lay down in the midst of a storm because he's not bothered by it. Matter of fact, he's not so bothered about the storm on the outside as he is about the one on the inside. No wonder Matthew records that he deals with the storm on the inside. And Mark and Luke says he deals with the storm on the outside. Sometimes Jesus has to minister to you where you are. And I know you want your storm fixed, but that may not be the problem. It ain't the external stuff. It's how you've been responded to it. Y'all want to hear some of this? This is bless my life. I hope it works tonight because I just want to get some good rest. Notice now. A storm is affecting those on the inside of the boat. This text also helps me to understand that, that, that as we look at the two storms, there is a cause and effect, uh, kind of like a response to a particular stimuli. I don't have time to talk about the psychology behind that, but we are affected. Usually, when you see disturbance, acting out behavior, ugliness, uh, what you see people do, they are doing that as a consequence of something else. Say amen. And what we want to focus in on is the negative behavior. I understand that. And that's probably where we failed, even in our homes and in our communities. We believe in the quick fix and band-aids. You know, they're still the number one seller in the, in the, in the pharmacy, Band-Aids. You know what Band-Aids do? They cover up. Now you, can put a little, you can put a little ointment on it. They, still call it. they call it an ointment or what they call it now? Neostate, there you go. There you go. I'm a Texas boy. We call it salve and ointment. <laughs> anybody? Anybody? Amen. And, 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 and they put a little and they put the Band-Aid over it. And guess what they've done? Covered it up. But a band-aid is a temporary fix to a long-term problem. Until you deal with the cause, then you can't change the effect. Are y'all listening to me? And I'm talking about the church too. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about anybody. I'm talking about on the inside. And too often, too often I know within our fellowship we have a tendency to bring in the externals to kind of create a kind of heightened stimuli. And I'm a victim of that. I'm a victim of being a pep rally, you know, a cheerleader for the kingdom of God. Uh, amen, amen. And I'm putting a band-aid. See, if I come in hyped, the intention is to get you hyped. And what I'm finding out, you can't hype up when it hasn't been hyped. <laughs> Say amen. I, I got a minute, can I... You, I, I can't put into you who I am. I can't bring out of you what ought to be there. And if you're not there, then we got a problem somewhere. So we put a Band-Aid over it. We bring in two song leaders. Then we're going to need three. Then we're going to need four. I maintain the whole church is a praise team. Did you hear what I just said? From the pulpit to the pew, we are God's praise team. And there are no external stimuli we can bring in here to take you where you need to be. We've got to put, then, then, then we got to get a preacher who can, who can fill us. Listen, our job ain't to fill you. That's the Holy Spirit's job. He said that when he, the spirit of truth, will come, he will guide you into all truth. I can't dwell in you. The Holy Ghost, I mean Romans 8 now, dwells in you. And when God is in you, God will come out of you. Yeah. Say amen. amen. The Pharisees accused Jesus of casting out demons with a demon. How do you cast out demons with Beelzebub? Yeah. Jesus says, a house divided amongst itself cannot stand. 
You can't cast out a demon with a demon. No more than you can call a guy to be hyped for God if the Spirit of God ain't in him. But we put band-aids over stuff. And we never deal with the real issue. Why are we lifeless and dead? I maintain that's a storm. And three things have to happen with a storm like that. If you're going to calm the storm within, do you not know the fact that your storm affects your worship says something to God about your faith? Did you hear what I just said? Notice when Jesus woke up, he didn't speak to the external storm. He spoke to the internal storm. I'm talking about the people on the boat. He didn't say we need another boat. Help me somebody. He didn't say we need another church. We need another song leader. He asked, why are you so afraid? Oh, ye. Ah, now we're dealing with the problem. Faith. Now, how do you just oppose a storm to faith? Jesus was saying, if you have faith, you can deal with your storm. And with your faith through your storm, when you get through, you'll give me some praise. You don't have to push a praise button in people who activate their faith. Because they're going to start praising. They'll start praising. Listen, they'll start praising on Monday in preparation for Sunday. Help me, somebody. But you keep putting a Band-Aid. And so now we're going to need another tweaker, something to tweak worship for next week so we can get you hyped. You know, and then you throw in a number of factors. You can say, well, I'm up in age. That ain't got nothing to do with it. It ain't got nothing to do. Listen, if you can't raise your hand, at least wiggle your toe every now and then and give God some praise. But it ain't about your toe. It ain't about your hand. It's about your head. The fact is you don't know who he is and what he can do. Satan has used that to restrict you from giving God praise. I call that a spiritual storm. Yeah. Every day I'm fighting for my Jesus, yeah. fighting for my faith. Yeah. I refuse to let the external storms keep me from giving my God praise. Yeah. That won't cost you nothing, but that wasn't even on the piece of paper here. I mean, on the laptop here, on the iPad, but I thought it was good. Now watch this now. Can we move on? One of the things I'm learning, and boy, I'm, I'm really getting blessed from this from this narrative, is that not all storms are external. Some, if not most, are internal. And what I mean by that, they are self-induced. Some folk are just stormy by nature. Amen? And I'm using the word stormy there for the word messy that I used two weeks ago. It's just messy by nature. And what I also learned is that when you get stormy folk involved with another group of stormy folk, you're going to have a, a hurricane issue on your hands. In other words, like this storm in our story, it has caused a, 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 a what I call a negative effect uh, upon those who are in it with the exception of one person whose name is Jesus. Say amen when you can. So what I want to do for the next few minutes is three things. I want to explore, examine, uh, and if you will, explain the storm within each of us. And if my findings have any merit, uh, the question is, how do we go about calming the storm within? What are your findings, Vincent? Well, first of all, to make a valid point, you need a solid premise. If not, you, you, can, you, can, you can flabbergast all you want. You can fill a bust all day long. I'm a practical, pragmatic guy. I need to know where you're going with your sermon. My premise is that not all storms are external. Some are internal. My premise is also that most storms, if not all storms, are internal, caused by us. And if that's the case, then most of us are walking around. We are literally walking along. We are stormy. Amen. And it's interesting. God can't use stormy people. Amen. He's got to have them calm. So he'll send them out to the storm. Some of you need not go out because they're too stormy. Amen. You have attitudinal issues. 
How do you know? I see it every Sunday. Amen. Not here, I'm just saying. I see it all the time. Certain songs, yeah. I'm going to, I, I'm thinking, I'm, I, I'm starting to keep my, my phone close because I don't know whether you've been sucking on a persimmon or you're having uh, a, a, psych, a physical abnormality. I don't know whether you're getting locked or what, but there's something wrong there. Say amen. Listen, to, the response to God is being inhibited by physical and emotional prohibitors. That's a storm. And then, God forbid, you go past the right time and got another storm. See, are, are y'all in the house? Say amen. And so what, what you wind up doing is you wind up restricting the power of God uh, in unleashing his power in your life because we got a storm going on. And so he can't use you. He can't send you to help somebody in the storm because you are the storm. Say amen. And until, until we start calming the storm, where? On the inside. You can quote scripture, you may know the Bible, but if your attitude and your disposition does not reflect Christ, we got a storm. That's a, what I call a religious storm. You got the Bible in your hand. All that power in your hand. But you know, you haven't accessed it. You're still, not, you're still mean, growl, grumpy, <laughs> biting. What's wrong with you, okay? What's the problem? I know what the problem is. Storm. And this morning, this morning, we want to give you a remedy. Look at your neighbor and says, I got a storm going on in here. I got a storm. Amen. If you didn't, if you didn't tell him that, then you don't feel like one of them cars because you're lying. There's something going on in there. Where is he going with that sermon? Why don't the Holy Spirit, why don't you be open to the Spirit this morning? Why don't you say, Lord, what you got? What you going to use that young fella to say to me about me? as opposed to he's talking to me. Well, who else am I talking to? That's one thing about me. You never need to be um, ambiguous or unequivocal about who I'm talking to. I'm talking to you. Amen. <laughs> Say amen. And I'm smiling. I'm talking to me. Before I put this sermon together, God had to deal with who? With me. People say, why he move around so much? There's a two-edged sword I'm dealing with up here. And when I swing it that way, it comes back around and oh, Oh, my goodness. So we're on the same boat. Say amen, somebody. Now, let me give you this remedy. Are we making any sense here? Now, notice now. Again, I believe that some storms, if not most, are internal. Yet, watch this now. I have to be open to the fact that they may have an external genesis. What I mean, sometimes they start on the outside. And they make themselves... Available on the inside. Is that not the case with this text? Everything I'm saying, saying to you this morning is coming out of this text. The storm did not necessarily start on the inside. Can I push the text? Can I have a little, Dr. Moore, can I have a little exegetical liberty here? I would like to conclude that the storm got on board boat with Jesus and didn't manifest itself until the external storm got out of control. Help me now. Sometimes you're already stormy and you're just waiting on another storm to heighten your storm. How do you know? The only person on the boat that wasn't bothered was Jesus. Say amen. And everything was fine until that storm got busy. Then the storm on the outside made its way to the storm on the inside. And what happened? It interrupted divine sleep. Why you want to interrupt the master's sleep? Had that been me? we still be sleep on the boat. Aren't you glad I'm not Jesus? I would have woke up, I would have said, y'all fooling, I'm, I was playing, the angels were singing, holy, holy, holy to me, and you interrupted my sleep. Therefore, I'm going to let the storm keep raging. Aren't you glad I'm not Jesus? Jesus woke up, and he had to storm, he had to calm the storm within. And in order to calm the storm within, Several things are needed. You see, in other words, like this storm in our story, it has an external origin. That is, it starts on the outside, but it has what I call an internal effect. You got some stuff going on at your job, and they bothering you. Amen. 
and you get home, you slam the car door, kick the cat. Amen, somebody. And just angry at everybody in the house. The other part of the house had a good day, praise God. They live in large. They, they can't even tell you about their stormy weather because we stuck on your storm. Help me, somebody. And sometimes then you, you bring that storm home and you get the whole house in, uh, it's a, listen, listen, in a stormy situation. Amen. Because you think your storm is the only storm. There are zillions of storms out there. And if every child of God is always affected by the externals, we will never, ever be able to get well. I'm in a storm right now. Amen. But I'm going to put some word on the storm. Help me, somebody. I refuse because there's too many storms. See, once Satan figured out that you are susceptible to all types of storms, he'll line up storms with names. He'll line up people with names. I mean storms. I didn't mean that. Storm. I mean people. What did I just say? He'll line up Jim, James, and Johnny full of storms, and they'll find you. Say amen. And because you don't know no better, you'll let them in. Come on in, sit down. Sometimes it's a wife. Say amen. And her sister. And her cousin. Sometimes it's a man. With his, with his insecurities, let me find somebody neutral. With his insecurities, with his inability to bring himself up to find some sense of self-significance. And so now he brings his storm into your life. And because somebody convinced you that you're a storm changer, you can change that man. You can't change. A storm can't help a storm. A storm in a storm will create another storm. And you have a typhoon on your hand. <laughs> All right, all right. Are we, are we making any sense? Once the storm on the outside moves to the inside, you have two things, chaos and conflict. But where, where do we start? Human logic would suggest we start with the storm on the outside. But the one who lay asleep in the stern of the boat thought otherwise. That's why it's good to meditate on the word. Man, I didn't see that the Holy Spirit revealed that to me. Because usually, as a therapist, I'm looking at the problem out there. As opposed to looking at the problem in here. And logic would say, when something goes wrong, fix what's broken. Assuming you know what's broken. I said assuming you know what's broken. You can't control the storms, they are there, but you can control yourself. So watch this. What the Lord does is that he understands that the problem transcends logic. Oh, help me. Did you hear what I just, I think I just said something. The problem that the boys were in transcends human logic. How do you know? None of them had enough sense nor the power to know that they possessed the power to tell the storm to stop that. Don't miss that. How do you know that, preacher? Because the text says, he asked them, why is your faith so weak? Notice he didn't say, why didn't you study meteorology? You missed the meteorological class we had last week. Why didn't you check the depth of the water? Why didn't you check the water? He didn't say nothing like that. He said, something wrong with your faith. Another time, Jesus told the disciples, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could literally say to that mountain, move. What are you doing? I'm transcending logic right now. I think what Jesus was telling these boys, you lack the, cap the, cap the capacity, logically and otherwise, to deal with this storm. What you need to deal with this storm had nothing to do with human reason and logic. It's a matter of faith. And I drop by to tell you, faith is transcendent. Faith allows you to walk on water when you know you can't even swim. Help me, somebody. Faith will help you step out in the unseen, trusting the one who can see. Help me, somebody. In other words, you're not trusting in self. You're trusting in him. 
And notice, he tells them, if you had any kind of faith, you ought to have been able to deal with that storm. Oh, I got to quit, but if you have any kind of faith, you can deal with your storm. You don't have to be under the beat down of the weather all the time. Say amen, somebody. God has given us, he hasn't given us the spirit of timidity. We're not some timid, passive little church. Every little thing come along, well, you know, I don't know what we I know what we're going to do. Amen. amen. We're going to call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. Why are you going to do that? Psalms 50 and verse 15. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run to it. Jehovah says, call on me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. I'm going to throw some faith on the storm. Say amen. Either it's going to work for me or it's not. And I drop by to tell you, if my faith ain't working for me, I'm getting out of it. I wouldn't be in a church and have a God that can't get nothing done. That ain't how I roll. Amen. Say amen. You sell your horse, you ride it. Right. Amen. You don't be walking the horse, ride the horse. <laughs> well, that ain't got nothing to do with you. I'm finna come down. What do we do? I maintain we don't start with logic. We start with faith. He began with the storm on the inside. The storm of doubt, the storm of fear and faithlessness. Notice verse 6, 26 of our text. You of little faith, why are you so afraid? If we are to face life's storms externally and internally, the calm of the storm must begin within. I spent too much time on the introductory stuff. But I'm about to augment uh, pivot. Talk about this tonight. Three things you got to do. And this is from 2 Corinthians. So here's the homework for tonight. I'll change plans. Time's up. I'll change plans. I want you to read 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 9. And we're going to use Paul. Remember I told you we're going to go get a character that makes practical the sermon. Paul does three things. He's got a storm here. And his storm, I have concluded, is not a demonic storm of destruction, but a divine storm of discipline. Paul needed to be disciplined. You remember uh, the Corinthians had kind of forced him into a little braggadocia. And he says in chapter 12, verse 1, I have a reason to brag, but I won't. But I, I'm going to because you kind of forced me into it. One time, I don't remember when, but 14 years ago, y'all remember that text? 14 years ago, I know a man who got caught up into the third heaven and he saw visions and revelations for which he could not tell anybody about. And the Bible says, lest that man, and he was talking about himself, became braggadocious, started to boast about his visions. Watch what the text says. The book says it was given him. It was given him a messenger from satanos. Don't you miss that? Sometimes God has to discipline you in your storm. And sometimes he'll send a messenger from Satan. In Job's case, there was no messenger. It was Satan himself. But Paul, Paul, he does three things. First of all, he acknowledges the genesis of the storm. Then number two, he addresses it. Verse seven, he acknowledges it. Write that down. Verse eight, he addresses it. And verse nine, he has to accept it and appreciate the storm. Woo, that's rich. But y'all got to come back. Y'all got to come back tonight. You got to come back in five. You want to get some help? God, he, God, God's getting ready to help you because he's helping me. Guess what Paul says? The reason I got the thorn in the flesh it's because of my own personal arrogance. By the time you get to verse 9, he thanks God for the storm. Oh, that's good stuff. But you won't appreciate the storm until you understand what God is doing with your storm. Sometime in his permissive will, he allows you to make your own decision contrary to his will. And you'll think it's a blessing. God can't bless what he hasn't blessed from the beginning. For instance, God told man and woman that I would bless that and multiply that. 
you might come along and decide, well, Mary, I'm going to marry Mindy. You can have a nice ceremony. You can have somebody there with a Bible. You can ask somebody to pray over the house, pray over that relationship. Well, simply because a man blesses it doesn't mean that Jehovah will. And guess what? God won't stop it. Would to God. Instead of asking the people, can we find anyone here who find reason why this couple should not be married? Somebody will say something. Maybe God should say something. God has already said something. But you didn't want to hear it. So watch this now. So he lets you do your thing. And then he gives Satan permission to come in and bother your mess. Why? Self-induced out of disobedience. I got to quit, but this is great stuff. I'm trying to help you to quit being angry at everybody else and start dealing with the storm in here. That you mad at folk that ain't even alive no more. Mad at mama, mad at daddy, just angry. And come to my class, angry. And I don't see it that way. Hey, man, good morning. Praise God. And I'm not letting the devil kill my joy because of your storm. There's too many of y'all in here for me to get on board with all of y'all storms. And so I decided maybe we better get the remedy from God on how to deal with our own individual storms. And it's time that you quit making your storm a storm for the church. This place must become a safe haven for the wounded. And we can't be wounded every Sunday. Am I making sense? So you got to acknowledge your storm. Then you got to address it. Paul says, I pray three times to my father. I ask him to take the thorn away. But he didn't. Sometimes you ever pray that something leave and it won't leave? Then you get mad at God, then you leave. You leave the church. Say amen. You leave your offering at another altar. <laughs> you leave your praise for another activity. Say amen. Where my Dodger fans at? I see you over there, kid. When they was winning, boy, we was on, they was on top of the world. I'm not a baseball fan, but I appreciate winning. On top of the world. The Dodgers, the Dodgers. Now they got a, they're in a slump. And the slump is heading to a dump. And now the Dodger fans, I still notice their demeanor and their disposition is dismal. Why are you looking like that's the ball game? We're Christians. The tomb is, is empty. Amen. I hope the Dodgers come around. I'm, I really want them to get to the pennant because if they don't come around, the contribution here at the church is going to go way down. <laughs> Say amen. I don't mean no harm. That's another stuff. But I'm rooting <laughs> for the Dodgers. If you're here this morning, if you're here this morning, learn to acknowledge what's going on in your situation. And understand sometimes the variables are not there for you to figure out. Some storms are designed to push you to God gotten in some trouble and some storms in my life where I could nobody help me but God. And God was waiting on me. He already had a solution to my problem. But I was blinded by my own arrogance, believing that I can logically, amen, and pragmatically with human rationale figure it out. So in his permission will, God left the thorn there. And the answer he gave he gave Paul, is he giving it you today? My grace is sufficient. Name your storm, whatever it is. Old age, my grace is sufficient. I ain't got enough grits in the pantry. My grace is sufficient. My folk won't come alive. My grace, you name it, God can claim it. He'll put some grace on it. On your feet right now. If you're here and you're in a storm, come on down. Come on down here. Come on down. Come on down. Now you can leave here with that storm if you want, then you'll claim that church don't care nothing about me. Listen, God used me to give you an antidote for your problem. Don't you leave here blaming the pews, nor the people in the pews. Take responsibility for your own stuff sometime. Yeah. Say amen. And some of us need to quit empowering sick folk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We call them enablers in my line of business. You know they got a problem. Amen. And you're going to passively address the problem by saying, well, baby, it's going to be. No, it's not going to be all right if it's not dealt with. Quit enabling people who choose to be weak. Now, if you're 18 and under, you get a grace card from me because you're still in the developmental phase of your life. But if you're over 18, you need to be straight up rebuked. 
You have to be saving yourself. Yeah. Claiming to be a Christian in the church of the, of the living God, the one true church, the only church you can read about in the Bible, but you're not accessing the power of God. And everything overwhelms you. Hmm. Say amen. amen. Hey, you get a headache, you won't be in Bible class. Hmm. The meat, God forbid, electricity go off in the home, you got to stay there and watch the meat. And you use that as an excuse. Are you listening to me? You're using that as an excuse up against divine issues that transcend this earthly place. Well, I, I come back at nighttime, but what, what, what? You know, I, listen, I, I'm not the guy to come tell your excuses. I'm going to hold you accountable. But we don't do that. Now, some of you will go on and do your own thing. Good. But be ready to deal with the consequences. Amen. Because for every cause, there's an effect. Yeah. It can be either positive or negative. Yeah. That depends on you. And I've had enough in negative effects yeah. off of my stuff that I don't want no more of it. Amen. I'm going to do what the Lord says. Yeah. Well, that's good. I can just preach all day, but I know I can't. If you're here... <laughs> And yeah, you're in a storm. Listen, you can sit there, fight me. You can fight this word if you want to, but that's your storm. Yeah. And you leave here with your face still down and still feeling miserable. You didn't been in the house of the Lord, but there's a storm going on. I'm turning my stuff over to him who was asleep. I woke him up. Yeah. And now I'm going to walk through the, the hurricanes and the tornadoes and the stuff. Why? I'm trusting in Jesus. Say amen. And when you bring me your, your tornado, I'm going to tie it up near the scriptures and say, follow the scriptures, and then I'm going on riding my horse. <laughs> say amen. It's too much for me to bear. I'm not Jesus. I can't bear the burden of the world amen. and of the church. That's too much for one man. Yeah. Say amen. Thank God why he made horses. That's why he made horses. You got to get your horse there, shepherd. Get your, if you're here and you need help with your storm, it's not what's happening on the outside. It's what's going down right here. Why don't you acknowledge it? Address it. Amen. Tonight we'll talk more about it. Will you come? If you're not a Christian, you got to, you're in a storm. You're in a crisis. You're in a crisis without the cross. If you get the cross, you can deal with the crisis. Well, what's my crisis? You're in sin. And only the cross can reconcile the unrighteous to the righteous. But this good stuff. Mm -hmm. Only the blood can clean up the mess we didn't make. Yeah. And over 2,000 years ago, he who lay sleep on the boat hung on a cross to fix your sin problem. Yeah. I'm so happy I don't know yeah. what to do with yeah. myself. Yeah. Say amen. Crazy. You still sin? Yeah, I do, but I ain't no sinner no more. Yeah. Crazy. There's a big difference. Yeah. There's a big difference. Say amen. Say amen. I don't wake up to sin. Yeah, I struggle with sin. But I'm living in salvation. And we're going to deal with the sin storm. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Can I get a witness? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Why am I the only one happy crazy this morning? Yeah. Uh, just, act, just act like you're happy. Yeah. Fake it till you make it. I don't know. Just do something. If you're here and you need prayer, God is able to help. You're not the only one going through sickness, sin, and suffering. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, we got mental illness in my family. Mm -hmm. Amen. And some of my sisters thought it started with me. <laughs> hey Amen. Until we got another diagnosis. Sometimes you better get a second opinion. See? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you struggling with sin? Welcome. Because we all are. Say amen. 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 I sin, but I'm learning to sin less. Because I woke up to save you on the ship. Yeah. Well. And his blood says, I fixed that thing for you, Vincent. Now walk in faith and live for me. Say amen. If you need prayer, we'll pray for you. We, we, listen, we were worried about the folk down in Florida and the folk in Mexico and the folk mm -hmm, in Houston. I'm worried about the folk here at Figaro. Yeah. Because listen to me. You haven't had the right storm. Come along. Test your faith. Amen, amen. And Satan, Satan, with God's permissive will, can design the right storm for you. And God himself can give Satan leeway to deal with you without ever taking your life. The question is, how will you handle your storm?
you're here and you need to respond, you're not a Christian, come by faith. Embrace Jesus as Lord. We'll baptize you today for the remission of your sins. You can leave here a child of God. Amen. And then if you're struggling, well, we'll struggle together. Yeah, I'm your preacher. I live in your world. I know, about, I know what goes on in the hood. Amen. I live in the hood. Amen. I'd like to get on out of the hood and go to heaven, but I'm stuck here with y'all in the hood. Yeah. And I figure, well, in the hood, what are we going to do? I'm going to put some word on everything around me. I'm praying for the demons. I'm binding the demons in my house. I'm going next door tonight. I'm going to shake some monkey dust or something on these other folks out there because they ain't listening to the word. Amen. Get the demons out of there. Yeah. Hey, we, listen, we got power, church. Yeah. I'm tired of buckling under the system of this world. Well, I've said enough. If you need prayer, we'll pray for you. Listen, God loves you, and I love you too. But don't take his word for granted. He can help you. Will you, will you come as we say, please? Come from the low, some way of sin. I hide you in the blood of.